Okay, so we've talked a lot about the Lagrange finite strain tensor and, and a little bit about what it means. Um, the, I'm giving you here the definition as we as we created uh, originally. So this says that the EIJ, that's the Lagrange finite strain tensor, is equal to one half times FKI FKJ minus delta IJ. So remember that F is the deformation gradient tensor. Okay. And sometimes it's not convenient to work in that tensor. And so we sometimes like to write this uh, in terms of displacement. So I just want you to recall, how do we define displacement? So recall that displacement is given by ui is equal to ci minus xi, okay? And we want to figure out a way to relate displacement now to the deformation gradient tensor. Well, if you remember, the deformation gradient tensor is defined as just the partial of Ci with respect to Xj. So to, to at least get that term to, to um, emerge in this equation, we just need to take the partial uh, of this equation with respect to Xj. So let's just say take the partial with respect to xj, and then we end up with partial ui partial xj is equal to partial xi partial xj minus partial xi partial xj. Okay, so this term, this first term on the right hand side. That is our definition of Fij. That's our deformation gradient tensor. This one, let's just think through what that means. We're asking for how does, um, how does a, a small change in x um, change another small change in x? And what I hope you can see is that the only time a small change will affect uh, in x will affect the same change in x is if those x's are in the same direction. In other words, if i equals j, in that case, this term will become 1. If i is not equal to j, that's going to become 0. So hopefully that suggests to you that this should be delta ij. So then we can go ahead and write that partial ui uh, partial xj is equal to uh, f ij, let me erase that dot over there, fij minus delta ij, and I'm going to, I as a shorthand notation, I'm going to call this ui comma j, so then I can uh, rewrite now in terms of fij and say that that is ui comma j plus delta ij okay so now i have fij in terms of a displacement quantity that i can go back and substitute into this equation for the lagrange finite strain tensor okay so when we do that we now can write the lagrange finite strain tensor using the displacements so i just say upon substitution Uh, into the definition of EIJ. Okay, so we'll write that as EIJ is going to be equal to one half. Okay, and we the first term in there was FKI. So if we we write this in the same form, this is going to look like U K comma I plus uh, delta ki, that quantity, times uh, ukj, or k comma j rather, plus delta kj minus delta ij. Okay? So now let's go ahead and do the algebra. So this is just one half, and this is u k comma i u k comma j 
and then uh, this is going to look like plus u k comma j times delta k i plus u k comma i delta k j plus delta k i delta k j minus delta i j okay so let's go ahead and look at these terms this term here that the first term we can't do anything with that that um, is in its simplest form but in this case when we multiply uh, sort of any tensor times a, a delta term, uh, we could write that out in matrix multiplication, but it has the effect of swapping indices. So uh, remember, this quantity is, is 1 when k equals i, otherwise it's 0. So we can write this as u i comma j. And this quantity, uh, the same thing, except now we're going to swap the k with the j and write this as u j comma i. And the same thing here. This looks like, uh, let's just, we, we can swap either way, but we'll go ahead and put, uh, uh, take the k equals i, put it here, and write this as delta i j. So we have a delta i j there and a minus delta i j. Those cancel out, and we're left with the displacement formulation for the Lagrange strain tensor as u i comma j plus u j comma i plus u k comma i u k comma j. Okay. So there's the displacement formulation. Whoops. Displacement formulation for the Lagrange strain tensor. Now we want to talk about what happens. We, if, if you remember from our last lecture, we talked about specializing uh, to small strain to get the delta L over L term that you're familiar with. And so now let's ask the question, what about small strain here? What does that actually look like for the strain tensor? So in the case of small strain, what that actually means is that we have small displacement and the small displacement gradient. Okay, so in that case, what does that mean? The displacement gradient, uh, so let me just write this. The displacement gradient is, is this term ui comma j, which we said before was the partial of ui with respect to xj. Okay, so if that term is small, then multiplying that term or squaring it there by itself uh, is is uh, much smaller so in that case we can uh, the, the term so for small strain then the u k comma i u k comma j term is negligible And we're left with, so we are left with what's called the small strain tensor, epsilon, which is what you're probably familiar with. So epsilon ij is going to be equal to 1 half ui comma j plus uj comma i. So that we, it looks like the Lagrange finite strain tensor, except it doesn't have that, uh, the, the squared term of the displacement gradient on it. Okay, so what does this look like? Let's say, 
let's just consider a couple cases. Let's consider epsilon one one. What does that look like? So that's partial u one, partial x one, plus partial u one, partial x one. So it's just partial u one with respect to x one. Okay. So that that uh, that should also remember. That looks like delta L over L in the one direction. Okay, so that's the displacement formulation. That's the small strain, um, uh, I guess, specialization of that. Um, so now the, the remaining questions for us, again, if this was a continuum mechanics course, we'd probably spend a little bit more time um, exploring different facets of what we're talking about here. I'm just trying to get you the basics so that you can use this uh, as we go forward to develop plasticity and viscoelasticity uh, governing equations. Um, this equation here is the one that we're going to use exclusively in this class to define um, our strains. Okay, so we're only going to work in a small strain regime, and we're typically going to work in a displacement gradient uh, formulation as opposed to a deformation gradient formulation. But I hope you've seen now that they're equivalent, but they're just not always uh, necessarily uh, convenient in every case. So what's the remaining questions now? So if I were to write down the strain tensor, so, so now let's go ahead and just write the matrix form of the strain tensor. Of epsilon. And that looks like epsilon equals epsilon 1, 1, epsilon 1, 2, epsilon 1, 3, epsilon 2, 2, epsilon 2, 3, and epsilon 3, 3. Okay, what I want you to note here is that if I swap i and j, then this quantity doesn't change, right? The, the order of the addition changes, but that still gives you the same number. So this, by definition, the strain tensor, and also in the case of the Lagrange finite strain tensor, but they're symmetric. So this is then epsilon 1, 2, epsilon 1, 3, epsilon 2, 3, okay? And what we've shown is that these quantities these represent nominal or engineering strains in the coordinate directions Okay, and if you remember back several lectures ago, we talked about there's two ways to talk about deformation uh, and deformation measures. One is to talk about a change in length, and that's what we focused on exclusively thus far. We've talked about uh, delta L over L or stretch or something like that. Now we want to answer the, in the future, the next uh, module, what we want to look at is what is the, uh, what is the measure that we want to use for shape or angle changes, as the case may be, and and I hopefully you can see as a preview that maybe these off-diagonal terms are related to that.